Live with me and be my love, and we will all the pleasures prove that valleys, groves, hills, and fields, woods, or steepy mountain yields. If all the world and love were young, and truth in every shepherd's tongue, this pretty pleasures might me move to live with he and by thy love. And we will sit upon the rocks, seeing the shepherds feed their flocks. By shallow rivers to whose falls, melodious birds sing madrigals. And drives the flocks from yield to fold, when rivers rage and rocks grow cold, and Philomel become calm. The rest complains of cares to come. And I will make the beds of roses and a thousand fragrant poses, a top of flowers and a kirtle, embroidered all with leaves of myrtle. The flowers do fade and wanton fields to wayward winter reckoning yields. A honey tongue, a heart of gold, is fancy's queen but sorrows fall. A gown made of the finest wool, which from our pretty lambs we pull. Fireline slippers for the cold, with buckles of the purest gold. Thy gowns, thy shoes, thy Beds of roses, thy cup, thy kirtle, and thy poises soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten in folly ride, and reason not to me. A belt of straw and ivy buds, with coral clasps and amber studs, and if these pleasures may be moved, come live with me and be my love. Thy belt of straw and ivy buds, the coral claps and umber stands, all this and me, no means can grow. To come to tea and be thy love. The shepherd swains shall dance and sing, for thy delight each May morning. If this delights thy mind may move, then live with me and be my love. But could youth last and love still breed? Had joys no date nor age no need? Then this delights my might might move to live with thee and by thy love. Hi, my name is Sydney and for today's video we'll be having an interpretation to the name's reply to the shepherd by Sir Walter Rout. So let's take a look with the first stanza. If all the world I love were you, and truth in every shepherd's tongue, his pretty pleasures might move to live with thee and by thy law. So Nim talks about how the shepherd could last forever if all the world and love in the first stanza. The beautiful things presented by a shepherd may persuade the Nim to live with and be her lover if shepherd tells the truth. It's clear from the poem's initial lines that Shepherd's hope would be broken later on. So several of the lines of the poem can also be found in Marley's poem. Time drives the flocks from field to fold, when rivers rage and rocks grow cold, and Philomel become dumb, the rest complain of cares to come. In the second stanza of the nymph's reply to the shepherd, the nymph refers to how she feels about the entire situation. She adds rather than the world being young and lovely. 
it is filled with time. So as we can understand, there is already a negative response towards the shepherd's letter. Let's take a look at the second line. When river, rage, and rocks grow old, river crash violently and rocks become cold. Philomel, the mythical young woman turned by the gods into nightingale or a bird, stops singing. And that silence foreshadows the future difficulties for the men. Let's take a look at the third stanza. The, the flowers do fade in wanton fields. To wayward winter and reckoning yields. A honeycomb, a heart of gall, is fancy spring but sorrows fall. In the third stanza, she describes the effect of time on living and natural world. She suggests that the wanton fields soon die when the winter arrives. The flowers die, the wanton fields lose their crops, winter comes upon everything that was once prosperous. So the following two lines reference someone's honeycomb, an example of metonymy. As we all know, it's a meaning spoken sweet words. It's a figure of speech in which the name of an object or a concept is replaced with a word closely related was suggest by the original. So we think things will be great forever when we are foolish and young but we soon learn how things go wrong. So tie gowns, tie shoes, tie beds of roses, tie cup, hair curtail, and tie prices. Soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten, and fully ripe in reason. This is represented in the fourth stanza of the nun's reply to the shepherd, where the speaker declares that everything the shepherd has gathered, such as down, shoes, and beds of roses, will all break in winter. That simple joy is not persist through the season, so like the cliché code, that nothing is permanent. The belt of straw and ivy bonds, the coral clubs and umber stands, all this and me no means can move to come to tea in my day long. And the stats of five, the name informs the shepherd that the things will not convince her to love him since she knows that everything is fleeting and that no single item will stay forever. They have no meaning to her and are unable to move her. But could you last and love still be? A joy no say, more age no need. Then this delights my mind my book. Leave with tea and buy it. So the speaker claims that he could last and love could endure all true seasons in the following final stanza. So furthermore, if joy had no expiration dates, this pleasure or this delights my mind might move. So this is not the case. She is unmoved by Shepard's adoration for her. So the name describes how time, pleasure, and poisonous pass through this poem. So choices and unpleasant words and this choice will not continue forever so almost everything on the list resembles spring to autumn so they could be gorgeous now but they will fade like everything else when the time comes for the season to change so thank you for listening and see you next time the passionate shepherd is a poem of seduction the speaker tries to convince his listener to come to their country. The speaker makes his case on the basis of luxurious they will enjoy together in the countryside, describing it as a place of pleasure that is at once sensual and innocent. The stanza one says, Come live with me and be my love, and we will all the pleasures prove that valleys, groves, hills, and fields, woods, or steep mountain yields. The speaker referred to as the shepherd begins with making one request to his love, which acts as the foundation of the rest of the poem. He at once lived up to his name as he asked his unnamed lover to come live with me, expecting that upon hearing the request, she will live whatever life she has and come to be his lover. Whatever he may be, the first stanza is like an introduction that says, if you will live with me, you will experience this kind of pleasures. Stanza 2 says, And we will sit upon the rocks, seeing the shepherds feed their flocks. By shallow rivers, whose falls, melodious birds sing madrigals. 
As the poet reminds us in the second stanza, the ideal places for couples to enjoy their love are suggested. They will watch shepherds feed their flocks or listen to waterfalls and bird melodies. Melodious birds sing madrigals, they say. If considered alone, the second verse exhibits the traditional pastoral concept of the cock shepherd watching his flocks and enjoying the land and all it has to offer in quiet relaxation. It's a romanticization version of the pastoral in which nature is saved with shallow rivers and melodious birds. Stanza 3 And I will make thee beds of roses and a thousand fragrant poses, a cup of flowers and a kirtle embroidered with leaves of myrtle. So Stanza 3 says the shepherd has a variety of enticements to offer to his lover in the hopes of bringing her to join him. He tells how he will create a bed of roses by making kirtle or outer gown and a cup of and a cup for her, both of which will be embroidered with all the leaves of myrtle, a common flowering shrub. Stanza four, a gown made of the finest wool, which from our prelims we pull fair line slippers for the cold with buckles of the purest gold. So stanza four is stating that the speaker goes to um, describe the various garments and accessories that he will make for his lover. It's vital to keep in mind that all of these things are conditional on her moving with him. He will spin a gown made of the finest wool for her from the lamps they will tend in together. His profession has suddenly shifted in her favor and he is able to provide her exactly what he believes she desires. He stands up by me. A belt of straw and ivy buds, with coral clasps and amber stones. And if these pleasures may thee move, come live with me and be my love. It says in the stanza 5 that he begins to wrap up his offer in the second last of stanza. He concludes his description of her wardrobe by describing her receiving a belt made of straw and ivy buds, and as well as coral clasps and amber stones. It is apparent that the speaker is doing his best to find and describe the items that he believes she deserves the most. The reader will never know if this is true or not. Last stanza. It says, The shepherd's swains shall dance and sing for thy delight each May morning. If this delights thy mind be, then live with me and be my love. So it says that the shepherd encourages the lady to accept his offer once again, and if she does, she will find that everything he has to offer is worth it. Every morning of May, the young shepherd will dance and sing to amuse you, and if you are affected by these delights, then live with me and be my dog. So I think the overview of the poem is the passionate shepherd to his dog is an example of Pastoral Poetry, written by Christopher Marlowe. Pastoral Poetry plays of the very common romanticizing of rustic or country living with the back of nature sentiment. While we may think of only our modern world as having this very urban sentiment, the truth is that people have been fantasizing about getting back of nature for centuries. Because when you grow up in a rural area and you move to an urban area to work and live for many years, you have this feeling of fantasizing the rural again, where you will think of living a simple life, inhaling fresh air, listening to every sound of animals, and a lot more. <laughs>